I heard it's a wall accent or something like that. And I was like, oh, dude, what is that? And I'm like going on YouTube, like looking up sconce accent, uh, going on Google, and then literally just a bunch of pictures of sconces, like wall sconces pop up. <laughs> I don't even know what that is, but we're live. It's spicy. It's a- <laughs> for real quick, a sconce is a, is a wall accent. It's for your lights. You basically hang on your wall and you put uh, you put lights in it or you put a light bulb in it and it's just uh, basically how you're it's it's what like a sconce is you can just google it real quick you'll see what it is you'll understand anything can be a sconce it's a light bulb pretty much that it hang on your wall but <laughs> that doesn't even sound like a word i want to try and pronounce bro i'm gonna be real with you <laughs> i was oh. so upset that it took me that long to figure out that he was talking about literally a light accent for a wall <laughs> i can't bro freaking bearded but what's up everybody <laughs> welcome to this week's episode of the podcast welcome back we are number 24 i totally didn't look over um and yeah man we we got a little bit to talk about here we're gonna talk a little bit about uh dabble a little bit as to the competitive nights that they just started introducing we're gonna dabble a little bit about the update a couple other things that we want to kind of get off our chest so to speak But before we get into it, let's go ahead and introduce ourselves. If we could do do that, if we could do choice bearded and then myself, tell people a little bit about yourself. All right. What's up, everybody? My name is Choice Plays. You could call me Choice or Nathan or whatever you want to call me, I guess. Um, I am the production director for Prime Championship Circuit, which is a new and up and coming uh, tournament organizer for a predecessor. I want to say like we're like the best, but I mean, I'm biased. Um, but uh, yeah, that's me. I uh, I really love this game a lot. And I want to see it grow. I want to see the competitive side grow. I want to see the content continue to get better and better and better. And just uh, start telling stories of players, on-screen talent. And uh, yeah, get that stuff out there because uh, we care about the community and we want to see it grow. Spicy. Appreciate you being here, fam. Very spicy. And I got to say, shout out to... the the individuals that go into all the moving cogs as to actually putting a tournament together because that shit's kind of hectic it's hectic even just being on the player side i can only imagine it's like yo get this shit going get this shit going what the fuck is wrong with that guy get this shit going (laughs) (laughs) it's a lot it's a lot yeah yeah i can only imagine go ahead bearded What's going on, everybody? It's I, the Beat Wolverine, your Michigan wonder, and uh, excited to bring this episode to you. I'm sorry I had to bring an Ohio State fan on the episode, but it is what it is. I peppered the room of Michigan. Hopefully, it'll keep the you know that state stuff away, and we can keep moving on. Uh, but uh, I'm I, I'm very excited with doing this because I oh that's what we're going to talk about next week's uh, post too. We got we have Midlander coming up. That's another thing I want to talk to you guys about. Who do you guys think about that? But we'll get into that later. So uh, yeah, on to you, Windu. I see. Uh, I hate the mid lane, but what's up, guys? So I'm Windu. <laughs> I'm Windu. Last night we'll tell you that. <laughs> I can't, bro. I'm Windu, also known as Windu the Mace. I predominantly do predecessor content as of late, as far as gaming goes. Even though I still dabble a little bit here and there, I've been streaming a uh, Star Wars game here recently. But this is the Predcast, where we specifically just kind of get together, focus on predecessor, the updates, the changes. We might compare it to other MOBAs, but we definitely try to keep it as much predecessor oriented as possible as we go through the subjects. And honestly, I just kind of I want to get right into it just to get it out of the way. I want to talk about competitive nights. Now, we do this live. So anybody that's watching live is going to be able to kind of interact here a little bit. Anybody that's watching after the fact on YouTube, I appreciate you. But those that are live i want to i want to see a couple of uh hit me with a yay if you participated in the competitive night and hit me with a nay if you did not get a chance to participate in competitive night and the reason i'm having the I'm chat just, do that oh go ahead you were gonna say I, I i was just gonna say i'm just gonna say nay right now because i was definitely not gonna get into that <laughs> i'm too scared too scared too scared bro i wanted to get yeah. into it so bad but literally like the day i'm like okay i'm on where the fuck is everybody at where's everybody like where are the homies everybody that's always sending me invites like let's go let's game nobody was on 
like literally n none of the homies were on maybe one or two were and i'm like yo you trying to run competitive nights oh sorry i already got snacked by a team we already got a squad going we'll let you know if there's a spot i'm like god damn bro like i, I didn't get to play i literally just did a couple solo matches and i was like all right i'm gonna get off so the issue here is that predecessor tried to compete with the nfl uh and anybody competes with the nfl you don't win um so don't put don't schedule your stuff during the time that the nfl draft happens and you'll have more people show up uh right there yeah me and honey me and honey guaranteed would have been there would have been able to play but uh we're uh we're big uh sports fans and the nfl draft essentially the first day of the nfl draft uh we're, we're going to that instead sorry um that that's the reason i didn't make it. so no i didn't i didn't i didn't uh partake but uh i was watching the draft instead Man, three podcasters who didn't partake <laughs> in the content from the game we have a podcast about. Oh, no. you, that's what I'm saying, bro. Like, and I saw. So I I was lucky enough to catch the EU competitive nights while I was at work. At least a little glimpse of it, right? And I saw how whenever you're on the, uh, I guess you could say the game mode selection screen. And you have that game mode selected it would it shows you a couple of stats for your team kind of like a little win loss that y'all got going etc um so it definitely seems super cool and from what i saw on the eu side it seems like it was actually going pretty well i didn't necessarily see too much downtime uh the, the matches seemed competitive it was just unfortunate that by the time i got home none of my homies were on enough to be able to play you know right and maybe the draft had something to do with that because again that's that is a north america thing the fact that it was scheduled right at the exact same time i just, i was disappointed hopefully tomorrow i get to play on it and you know do a little bit more with it but i haven't really heard anybody talk about it Epps is saying in chat that they need hero swap and uh for for no mirror a or no mirror matches for a uh, asap or at least hero swap uh now mirror matches a different situation but uh the hero swap the issue that you're gonna have with the hero swap is the role selection uh and with the uh the hunt item for a jungle right now whoever has the jungle role is going to have that hunt item so if you hero swap the jungler then your adc is going to have the hunt item and you're that's not going to work for your smite um so that's the biggest issue they got to figure that out first and jungle so that's is gonna be that's something gonna weird some yep what's well, going to be weird in any competitive seven even in tournaments it's like well we know who's not fucking faking it on their team that guy because he's a fucking right. jungler he's stuck with it um right yeah probably a little a little bit of a push that should be they should throw in there um no, suspense I, is saying I, devil's advocate maybe population was just too low like as far as you know just people playing in na during that time because again it is on a thursday which is a weird random time like thursday 7 p.m or whatever the fuck the time was right right like it is a little bit on the odd side and it didn't help as to the fact that na at a pretty big event sports wise and as far as like north american sports go you know the draft and the super bowl are up there you know what i'm saying yeah, right right like um, even if you don't watch football you watch the, the draft issue, or the super bowl usually the other issue they were having and, and, and it's hard to I mean, that's a good, uh, what's the one I'm looking for? A speculation of a devil's advocate in that situation, but it's hard to say that until we actually get more data points. And so the next, like tomorrow's, uh, so obviously this, this episode is being recorded on Wednesday. Um, or, and so Thursday, tomorrow's uh, next uh, competitive nights, we'll be able to find more about it. They did have a bug that was causing uh, people who competed in the EU competitive nights. Uh, when they go to try to compete in the NA competitive nights, they weren't allowed to play. So that would bring your population down as well. Um, so, and they, I believe that was fixing one of the hot patches. So that should be, it should help that uh, then tomorrow's competitive nights uh, go a little smoother. Um, so we'll see how that one goes. Plus it's not competing with the NFL draft. So that'll be uh, beneficial as well. That's already a huge dub, just not competing with <laughs> the NFL draft. So hopefully I mean, we're going to see a lot more people uh, participating in this one. And it is very interesting to to think about the fact that it's basically the same draft as like normal, um, normal Q. Um, like X was saying, like, hopefully we can get some non mirror match kind of stuff in there, but that's probably not going to come until the new well, UI drops. 
Maybe? I mean, I do find it interesting, and I'm kind of with Crashy in the chat. It's, it's weird to have competitive nights. It's weird to have these tournaments running, and they haven't even implemented like a like a actual draft no mirror match or a draft band setup some sort of alternate draft mode e even if it's just in the overlay that's already there see you I, know i don't put those two mutually exclusive like i <clears throat> I, I i when i hear competitive nights like you i mean you can literally go into casuals right now and just be competitive just like, you know, I'm going to be a fucking sweat and try hard and I'm just going to be competitive. Like the word competitive just means that you're trying like you're being you're being competitive. Now, to me, what you're when you're the no mirrors, pick swaps, bands, all that stuff, that's ranked mode. You know, and this isn't ranked mode. This is our step towards it. You know, this is something to kind of make the people who want rank. This is the, like the hey, this is going to help you know hold you over. I know you want rank, but we don't have it right now. So here's something just to kind of you know pay that tithe and you know going into it like I, I think you can still have both i mean i think this is just somewhere for and it's i think it's gonna help potentially help the people who don't have a five stack to go with like hey i can go play casuals right now and i know i'm not gonna go up to a, a with a sweaty five stack because they're all on competitive nights right now so i can you know, play solos and not have to worry about you know getting pushed into that so so I'll play devil's advocate here, and then I got a question here for choice. So yes, you can have both, but I think it's inherently assumed that if you're going to a competitive event, of course, of course, you're or you're always competitive, regardless if it's casual or ranked. Competitiveness is there, right? But if you go into a competitive event, whether it's scheduled by the game or whether it's scheduled by a tournament, whatever it may be, you expect certain competitive features and like the draft thing that's not a ranked feature because league of legends has draft pick and bans and everything on a casual game mode as well it's that it's just a competitive game mode where you can have the draft on casuals and then you can have the draft on ranked you can have it on both sides but you also have the option to do a blind pick on the casual side which means no draft everybody just picks whatever mirror matches go etc so right. the, there is a differentiation there that we have to make as far as the draft option of being able to pick and ban and etc no mirror matches that is a competitive option because it makes the game more competitive it makes the game harder regardless of what game mode that's in so if they're aiming for competitive nights that should be an option yeah My the draft is just so freaking important for competition in general and it, it seems like they're putting a focus on competition so just having the same blind draft like you're talking about where it's just you know you kind of snake draft sort of and that's it there's no bands there's no uh mirror matches or there is mirror matches i want to say um it just doesn't feel competitive it just feels i think what you were talking about earlier it just feels like you're queuing into a regular queue trying to just trying to make it work now yeah from what you've seen on the tournament side do you think the workaround that people have found with other websites and stuff like that like do you think that's been able to help fix things kind of people taking it into their own hands or do you think this is something a predecessor should actually kind of step on it and implement as quick as possible well i we are kind of lucky um we're pretty blessed i guess you could say that one of the devs actually sent us a a pcc specialized draft tool using google sheets so it's literally it looks like a snake draft basically but there's a ban included and obviously um when you're drafting in a tournament setting you're not gonna mirror match because that's just part of the thing that's the rules um so we're kind of lucky that we have that like extra tool in our belt i guess um to have like that competitive draft and i as, i mean as far as i know everyone really enjoys it like that's that's the one tool that's kind of keeping people like feeling like it's a competition feeling like it's a, a real tournament and that we're actually you know we've got some agency when it comes to our draft and uh it, it i mean so far it seems like it's been uh it's been a good tool to have now another thing that makes it competitive though i i from my opinion i don't i haven't played it so i don't know how, how it's working but is the the what do we want the mmr that you get with it right where you go into competitive dice and you win and you just keep climbing it's almost like your I, own win loss I, the way I, yeah. I think of it 
I think of it as a uh, um, the thing on uh, what is that the um, mode on Mortal Kombat where you just got you literally try to climb the tower. You got to win your way up that tower. I feel like that's kind of like that. That's a competitive side. You know, you go in. It's all right. Now we're trying. We're, we're our five stack versus your five stack, and we we if we win. We go up, and if we win, we go up. If we lose, we come down. And you're just trying to climb your way to the top, and like that's another thing that's like again that makes this competitive night. So you don't have that in casual mode. You know, you can you could put your five stack in casual mode, and you're, you're just literally just going up against casuals, and just like yeah, you can be competitive and be sweaty all you want. But this is something that you're literally trying to climb. You're going up against another five stack that just one two in a row you're going because our five said this one three in a row you're, you know that's where it's like all right now it's like who's going to come on top with the team that's going to win you know all right everybody that's played all these five stacks that are playing right now who's the one that's still undefeated or who's the one that's that lost the least whatever that's another spot to make the you know a competitive night to the, which is not a ranked mode which doesn't give you the draft uh the the <clears throat> doesn't give you the mirror match doesn't give you uh you know it's still there and again, yeah, this is their version one of competitive rights. Yeah. You know, who knows? Maybe next uh, roadmap, we'll see something that's going to uh, version two is going to get released and they're going to have bands and whatever, you know, I can imagine a new draft system might actually come with that big UI update that they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the whole it's thing. They're like, they're like, oh, well, maybe they haven't implemented it because that whole that little band section that has to be included. Maybe that's part of the new UI. They're going to make it look cool and stuff. Um, hopefully it doesn't take too long because I know they might be trying to perfect it to look all purdy and stuff like that, right? So, I guess we'll see. Um, anything you guys want to hit about the competitive night specifically before we move forward? Uh, I'm excited to watch tomorrow's. I hope uh, we do have some really good competition and we do have like players coming out, even though they know it's you know the same draft as regular queue, um, but they really try to make it fun and. I want to see who comes out on top of the ladder, I guess. You know, the competitive night's ladder. I, I had a comment on YouTube saying that we should do a Predcast competitive night's team with only Predcast people or people that have been on the Predcast. Just like exclusively to the Predcast to help promote the Predcast. But at the same time, just like, fuck it. Like, we're all going in and we're, we're going to try and do it. I was like, you know what? Not a bad idea. I'll, I'll, hey, I'll see what happens. Fun, man. I, <laughs> I'll, I'll You're still not about it. You're still not about it. Ah so, oh, man. I, I can so run a stream, a, but I can't. Uh, I can't play we'll, the game right we'll now. Well, I one for the homie. I'm an off lane main now, and Joey's an off lane main. Who gets off lane? Uh, I'll take Joey on support. Confirm. <laughs> I'll take Joey on support. <laughs> <laughs> Confirm. We'll just throw. Or if Medkit comes back, Medkit could be support. You know what I'm saying? Right, because yeah, Medkit just finished closing on his house. We wanted to throw a quick, little quick congratulations on the homie. Y'all yeah. throw a GG Medkit in the right. chat. Much love. Um, but uh, what are we talking about next, Bearded? It is with it. Uh, first, we talk about F6 being a little shout out to F6 being on here with the, the PCC uh, caster here. He also been on the podcast before. Uh, so it looks like out of everybody we have here, Lance is the only one we haven't had on here. So Lance, hit me up in the DMs. Let's get you on here as well. Um, Let's go. And uh, we'll go from there. Uh, but next, let's go over these patch, uh, the patch notes. Let's go over that real quick, and then we'll we'll bounce off. No, no, let's not go over that. We're, we just talked to PCC. Let's uh, let's give choices. Uh, let's give him the platform here. Let's uh, let's oh, go over PCC and like let him explain how we it came about. Like what what is like, PCC? Well, for one, for one, I need to, I need to go sports here. I know you said it was your dad, but like you live out in California, and you're an Ohio State fan. So explain yourself because that makes no sense. <laughs> Nobody's a California I mean, fan. Uh, I, uh, true, true. California, <laughs> does, California doesn't even care about California sports. That's that's the sad thing. That's why the Chargers are all of a sudden in LA. I, I whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> I I am an OHIO fan because my dad just had all the stories in the world about him walking to the stadium and like Uphill seeing the games ways. live. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, barefooted, <laughs> all, all the above. And, uh, you know, so I, I don't necessarily care for sports. I'm not going to lie. I you realized I'm your just, dad wasn't walking to the stadium. He would just go to the bathroom cause it's a toilet, right? I hate him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That that's exactly what was uh, happening. <laughs> but <laughs> You the whole time thought he was talking. He's going to the he's going to the Ohio State Stadium, but no, he was actually just going to the toilet because it tastes like a, it's shaped like a toilet bowl. Um, so all right, <laughs> that's fine. It's your dad. That is your dad from Ohio. 
Yes. Yeah. Or you he grew up in Columbus. He grew up in Columbus. Okay. Yeah. So, so your dad failed you. Got it. All right. That's fine. Exactly. Um, Damn. What <laughs> the, the fuck? Yo. I'm not going to let my dad watch this show at all. <laughs> <laughs> right? this oh my God. <laughs> dad, I love you. If you somehow find this, I love you. There ain't much to do in Ohio. So you might as well send it to him. But, <laughs> but I'm sorry. All right. Like, let's quick sitting on Ohio. Quick sitting on Ohio. Next. <laughs> I mean, true. Uh, Go ahead. So PCC, <laughs> what is PCC? Yeah. Uh, how did PCC. it come about? Like, where, where did you come in? Did you do stuff before PCs like PCC that to get you to this? Let's, let's uh, bring that whole thing in. All right. Let's rewind basically all the way back to Paragon. I, me and a couple of friends, like in person, I lived in a 500 square foot, uh, studio apartment and we crammed in like six guys with computers and we were like, let's put on a tournament for Paragon. And I was like, cool, I've never done it before. I mean, we've done like lands for Halo in like my parents' garage. But other than that, I, I never really knew what esports was. So my buddy was all into it. He was a caster for WoW Arena for a long time. And he was like, dude, let's do this. This is the next wave. And I was like, cool, whatever. We did it. It was <laughs> had the worst name in the world, but I still love it. I hold it close. It was the Bare Naked Brawler uh, tournament series. <laughs> Don't question ask. mark that's that that's just uh that's just what it was that's what it was um but yeah i just like fell in love with esports i fell in love with paragon and uh, i was playing on my playstation and then i bought a computer and uh basically a few years later after paragon shut down um i got an offer from one of our players actually from our tournament series to fly out to ohio which is really funny um <laughs> I lived in Columbus for like almost two years, uh, worked for an esports company and did uh, what's called the Valorant Sunday Showdown. So every single Sunday we put on a 64 team Valorant tournament for a thousand dollars. And uh, yeah, it was pretty wild. I casted, I did production, I did hosting. I did basically everything there is to do for a an esports production besides play uh, for that. So again, kind of snowballing my love for esports. And then obviously predecessor kind of came out, um, got linked up with some people like Geronimo Jack, um, Stranger, um, just some just some homies from the Paragon days. And we decided to put on a tournament, mostly because they, they grabbed me because I put on a random overprime tournament and uh, I, I do good on the production side. I'm not going to lie. I just, I'm going to toot my own horn on that one. I do good on the production side. So they saw that and they were like, dude, we want you come over to us um, and let's put on a sick ass tournament. And I was like, sure, let's do it. And uh, that's kind of how PCC started. All right. Bro, that's All spicy. Right. I didn't know that it went actually that far back into the Paragon days. And then you got moved across the fucking states and shit. By the way, I totally just noticed that Mando helmet you got in the corner. Holy shit. I, Shout I, out I, to I you. Just noticed I, I just <laughs> noticed the Mando helmet. This is, this is straight from Disneyland as well. So this is like legit stuff. It's... Mm. Yeah, not Disney okay. World. Other side of not the states. Disney World. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The California one. <laughs> oh, sad face. No, but uh, <laughs> but no, that's that's dope. I appreciate you bringing that out. Like, I, I totally just realized as I was talking to you. But dude, dude, that's actually awesome that you've been into it that long and that you continue to do it. And hopefully, you guys got the return, the viewership that you guys were hoping for in the tournament. And we'll continue to see more tournaments on the road. Huh? Yeah, actually, uh, I wanted to give the pred. The Predcast and exclusive. Um, we have our next dates for our next event. Uh, so it's going to be. Hold on, let me make sure it's right. June 3rd <laughs> for the group stage and June 17th for the main event. So put that in your calendar. Uh, if you're a player, uh, watch our socials. Uh, PredPCC on Twitter. Uh, we'll be posting the signups link signups link there as well as the discord so just keep your eyes out on those social medias and uh we'll have that uh those signups up pretty soon but yeah those are the dates june 3rd june 17th we're gonna it's gonna be fun 
send me those uh links too when you get a chance i'll push those to window so when he pushes the the youtube yes. uh we can put those in the description below we'll have it as a pinned YouTube. comment for everybody like yo yeah. be ready bro <clears throat> right what's up so oh, that's exciting thank uh, you for that june yeah, 3rd that's awesome uh bearded when's your team gonna sign up uh what well, my team i'm a solo player dude <laughs> Windu left me. I'm not good enough for him. Whoa! I would <laughs> never. Whoa! You know the cast man. <laughs> it's just the way my checkings and my savings works out. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, he couldn't afford to play with me. Uh, it, it was costing him too much elo. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so I now that you you said you brought back the old Paragon, I, I got to do another shout out to Medkit. I got to ask his questions here. Uh, mm -hmm. When you played Paragon. Who is your favorite hero and who is your least uh, favorite hero? Uh, okay. Uh, that's a tough one because I kind of like went in waves. It was phase for a while. I actually played in the PCL farewell to uh, tournament as phase uh, got pretty far. I can't remember how far we got. I think it was either quarters or semifinals. Um, but phase was my phase was Bay for a long time. Morgesh, sorry. Sorry to all the Morgesh haters out there. I, I totally understand. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, Bellica. Bellica mid was the jam for a long time. So okay. that's it. Those, those, those are my, those were my heroes least, for a long time. Least, like somebody you hated to go against, whatever your Wukong. least favorite. Wukong. <laughs> okay. Understandable. Character. Do not <laughs> bring Wukong into this game, please, for the love of God. But if you have to, I guess, whatever. <laughs> I'm okay if you replace Orb Prime with Wukong. Just throw that bitch in there. Let us beat him up. I think that'll be all right. <laughs> That'd be fun. <laughs> the new character. All right, there we go. Uh, someone mute this guy. Hey, what do you mean? He's an Ohio fan like you. What do you mean? We so. need Wukong? Are you kidding me? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, just write him off. He's an Ohio fan. It's okay. Um, <laughs> he's an Ohio fan that lives in North Dakota. Explain that. That makes no sense. Uh, yeah, that's that's interesting. <laughs> that's called bad Wi-Fi. California. Yeah, that's okay. called Ooh. bad Wi-Fi. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. Um, <laughs> so, um, another thing. While we're on this post, uh, uh, talking about other things that are going on outside of Predcast and outside of Predecessor, um, we have. Uh, another show that's coming up. Uh, I don't know where it's going to be. Is it going to be live? Do you know, Choice? Does Lance, do you know? Is it going to be live uh, or is it, it going to be recorded? Be, it should be live on the For the Core um, Twitch channel, Twitch? if I'm correct. Okay. I didn't get that information. So uh, give me a minute while I'm pulling this up here. All right. This is a, you know, just a description from Muggy. So Muggy is going to be doing uh, on Fridays. He's going to be doing a couple different style shows. Uh, there's three different styles. And um, this Friday coming up, he's going to be talking to uh, Lance Cecil, who's also in chat right now. Um, and uh, it's going to be talking. They're, they're going to be going over like the tournament stuff that was happening on uh, the PCC. Um, so. He says, to put it simply, the goal of the show is is about having a regular moment where we go in more uh, depth, more in depth on specific topics. Uh, we plan for now three types of uh, emissions. We got Meta Talk, which is the one uh, Lance Cecil is going to be on. Uh, we're discuss a tournament with uh, multiple analysts and go over the event. Uh, and then uh, in the in the mind of a pro where we invite a top player uh, and go over, you won't go there, Windu, a uh, top player to go over a replay of him uh, to get more insight on the thought and process, but also try to share a bit of behind the scene uh, info, like uh, mental, uh, team mentality, communication, feelings, emotions. All right, and then a wild dev appear. Uh, simple interview with the dev where uh, we focus on uh, one specific topic, for instance, uh, balance philosophy or uh, all the creation steps to, to do, a, do an original hero. Uh, goal is to help the community understand that getting the work done uh, is not easy. Uh, since I have a background on working on video games, I think uh, spreading the knowledge can help the community be more understanding and also provide better feedback if the community uh, knows what is expected of them. All right. Uh, so, and you said for the core is the Twitch. Uh, you said that choice, right? Uh, I do believe so. I'll double check that, but that should be the where it will be streaming live. All right. 
I do know that if you guys follow the predecessor uh, uh, Twitter, they did retweet this uh, announcement that was happening uh, with Muggy and Lance Cecil. So uh, that'll give you more information on that post as well. Um, maybe we can even find that uh, in their Twitter post. Uh, we can go over that. We can confirm all of that information. Maybe it's there. I'm hoping it's there. Um, a little further down. That's Is that it? Already got it. Oh. Thank you. All right. Uh, that's the Fang booth, though, isn't it? For the core community tournament. No, yeah, yeah. we're not about the tournament, though. Oh, yeah, then. but that's where it will be streaming live, I do All believe. Right. Got you. I did post a Discord on there. I'm assuming that's the For the Core Discord. Yeah, yeah. for the, yep. Uh, I posted the name of the Twitch channel. It's For the Core Tournament. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Yeah. I got it up. I got it up on the stream. So, oh, hey, look at that. Yeah, right there. Yep. That's the uh, right there. So Twitch for the court tournament. Okay. So you guys go there on Friday uh, the 5th at 8.30 p.m. I'm sorry. What is that? C-E-T. Anybody know what that is? I don't know. What that is. Right? No. That is Europe time. No. That is, is it? That, that is not. Yeah, that is Europe time. So I'm pretty sure that's like. Uh, like 2, two o'clock for us. Right? Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like 1.30, like yeah, 2 yeah. o'clock, something like that. All right. So you have to go back and watch the VOD if you're NA side. Um, that's why I was, I actually tried to get Muggy on here, uh, to help kind of explain it and go over what, what's going on there. Um, but Muggy, this is not a time that works for him. So it was not, not possible. So that's why he gave me the description of how the, what the shows are going to be about what's going on there. Um, so that's gonna be something cool as well. Um, Damn, I'm 11 AM Pacific. So that means 2, 2 PM Eastern basically. Damn, bro, I'm, I'm going to be at work. 2 p.m. Yeah, that's not I mean, 2 p.m. is at least something that's possible if you're uh, not working on uh, Friday. Um, so I love to see something like this. Like, again, uh, you know, we have us, the podcast. We, you know, we're out here. We're trying to put stuff out there to help the community understand things. You got other people in the community member like Muggy out here trying to put something, get information out there. I love seeing the community trying to help the game grow. You got choice out here doing PCC, you know, trying to get advertisement going on there. So, uh, again, love to help shout out anybody we can doing this information. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. Quick little shout out to Predecessor for doing the wallpaper Wednesday on their Twitter. Yeah. I absolutely love that shit. I I need more of this. Don't you only do one week and then skip two fucking weeks or something like that, Predecessor? Like having a little yeah. like they've done two in a row. Uh, yeah, they they think they did one last week. They did and that that this, that's this week's Wednesday. Like yeah. last week they did one that was uh phase. I think okay yeah, yeah you're right face yeah because I, I definitely saw it um but yeah super cool i'm totally digging it i really do wonder if they're going to be able to give us a wallpaper every week because that is something that's like they got to dedicate something and somebody just to do that you know what i mean yeah but all in all i i love the revenue wallpaper i'm pretty sure it's a wallpaper we've also seen in the past and just update notes right it's nothing crazy new it doesn't have to be it's just for the fact right. that it's like, hey, in case you miss this, in case you're new, here's a wallpaper of Revenant. Save that shit. Add it to your collection. Have the the slideshow going in the back of your PC while you're streaming. Super nice touch. Keep doing the this. Part critique, the one critique I would love to have with this, and I don't know how, again, it might be a little bit more for them to do, uh, but it's something Fault was doing, and I really enjoyed it. Um, when Fault would do this, they would put, they would put it in their patch notes. And you could pick, uh, you could do a, a 1K option, a 2K option, and a 4K option. And you could download those four different options because you different size monitors. So resolutions, yes, thank you. Um, so you could pick those four different resolutions, those different resolutions that fit your monitor in that situation to make it look more crisp and better on in that situation. So that would be something I would really appreciate them to be able to do if possible. I don't know if you could do that on a Twitter post or not, put those different download options on there. But yeah, it's just putting links the same way predecessor had it. A link to the oh. actual i'm sorry the same with fall had it thank you yep. uh just put a link to the actual image itself so when you open it it's a brand new browser tab with the image in its resolution and you just download okay. it from there yeah. let me just have that would be i think that'd be just something a little, little quality of life change that they could do uh i think would be a good good thing for them but yeah, yeah i, I hope do we love seeing more i want to see more like not the not the things that we've already seen even though like obviously we really like to have basically any sort of content from predecessor but let's see some like really really as window likes to say some really spicy ones yes bro 
Yes, yeah, give me some of those really spicy ones. Give me a scared Narbash with a Murdoch pointing a gun at him or some shit like that. You oh, know what I mean? Sick. Like a random Narbash, like, oh shit. Like eyes open and everything. And then a Murdoch just like holding the cannon. Like, so they can get creative with it by all means. Get one a Narbash holding his drumsticks into a cross as a counter is trying to like jump on him. That's funny. That's funny. Okay, I dig I that. I like that. I, I like that. I like that. <laughs> yeah, like they, they can get creative with it by all means, for sure. And I like that they've, they're at least giving us some that they've already shown, made it a little bit more easily accessible. They could probably filter through that quite a bit because, you know, they got Countess release pictures, they got Shinbi release pictures. So they'll probably filter through those first, right? But yeah, I. I know it definitely is going to take some time to get and a lot of effort to just get one specific picture made. Right. And it's just a picture, I, you know, apply yeah. it towards advertising later on, apply it towards promotional, like maybe put it in a press kit, yeah. you know, get more use out of it instead of just a Twitter post. But definitely it would be awesome to see that shit for sure. I agree. I am in agreement. All right, Bearded, anything also else Lance in the chat? Oh, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> what did Lance, Lance. say? <laughs> sexy Narbash sexy pose one. Narbash. I'm going to say no to that. But also I made us send it to my inbox. <laughs> hey, man, if y'all want if y'all <laughs> if y'all want to make Narbash and give him actually chicken and him just fucking biting on the chicken, like I'm OK with that. Do that shit. Yeah, That'll be hilarious. Backing anime. His little KFC like bucket. On just <laughs> <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Oh, I see you got the mask on. Okay. All right. You want to go straight into the uh, into the update or anything else we want to go over before we do that? Um, no, I think we'll, we'll go on the update and then we'll just kind of leave the, the rest of it because pretty much it's going to be speculation for next week's uh, champion. We'll see what we get. True. But uh, yeah. So we'll uh, go into. So it says, uh, "Hey, uh, champions!" As we gear up towards the version point seven content patch, we're tiding uh, you over with the slightly smaller balance patch. This time, decreasing the damage values of some mage, assassin, and bruiser itemization to push back their raw strength of the uh, their early item spikes. The aim here is to decrease the snowball potential of non ADC rolls while helping push towards our larger and more long term TTK goals. Uh, we've also been keenly uh, listening to your feedback, powering up Faze, who didn't quite stick the landing when we uh, when she was uh, introduced last week. Uh, Grux is also getting some help uh, this this time to his mid late game potential. Uh, he may have thick skin, but his this Rhino definitely needs a little love. Looking beyond this week, however, we're excited to say that the version 0.7 patch uh, we mentioned uh, just a moment ago is coming along very well, and we can't wait to share it with you in a couple of weeks. Things could still change depending on how swamped we are, but now, uh, right, but right now, we're hoping to lace it with some very big changes that'll help us push further towards those TTA goals, uh, which uh, watch this space. Thank you all, as always, for your ongoing support. Have a lovely week. Blood Mortius, Senior Game Designer. Watch Thanks, this space is a very specific phrase to use right there. Right? I'm going to just throw it out there. Like, that seems out of place. I think that might be a teaser of some kind right there. But um, I love little comments like this. Like, just little designer notes, right? Let's just see, like, kind of into their mind and... I mean, in general, it's just kind of like, hey, this is how we feel about the state of the game. We heard you guys. Here's what we think. Here's what we're trying to do. Just kind of give you the rundown in case you want to read a couple paragraphs here. But kudos. I think it would have been cooler to see a video of that, quite frankly. Just a video and have it right there. Just hit play. A message from a dev. You know what I'm saying? Right. Just have them say it over 60 seconds. Or less, right? Like instead of writing it out, I think it's more. Effort. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. A little more personable. Yep, I agree with that. Um, I do, I do like the uh, like they're they're pushing, like they're letting you know, they're giving you that little bit of like, ooh, I get it to get a little more excited about version point seven. Uh, with the hey, we're we're trying to get some some more big like big things to come with it. 
but you know that might not you know we might not get it for version seven but if they're it lets you know that like it's close to being ready for version seven if it doesn't come with version seven then most likely version eight when we get our offlaner that's when some of that stuff's probably going to be coming like we're pretty close to getting some of the stuff that's on the roadmap is what that way i read that that's what i understand from that which by the way we're getting up there in the numbers i know joe was talking about it i'm pretty sure in the last one if 0.7 is the next one that means we have 0.8 0 0.9 and then basically no. release maybe no you just go 0 0.10 you literally you that number yeah. could be it, it could be you know, 0.100 0.3 you could be yeah yeah you could yeah you could just that number just keeps getting numbered it, all those numbers it's just, are they break it's just a series the number, yeah the zero the zero is everything that's after full release right so right version one is going to be full release and you have version two version whatever like but then you have the major cannabis. major it's changes all size yeah. it's all size related right big 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 things happen with that big number right that first number then medium sized things happen with that you know the middle number which like is like adding a seven. character and then small things like hot fixes or just balance patches happen with that small number right that's why we're still on version six but it's 6.5 that's all those numbers mean Hey man, a man can dream. All right, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> I am from Ohio. So uh, I, not all, but not really. I don't know. That's all they can do. Leave them alone. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. All right, next skins. <laughs> Leave it to a Michigan guy to shit on those dreams. Um, yeah, all right. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> all right, new skins. Get ready for a fresh new look with the season's hottest new skins. Head to the store to find the following: Red Death Kalari Common. Siege Breaker Crunch Common. I'm okay with them putting common skins in like minor balance patches. It kind of makes this it even a little... feel a little more minor. Um, but I really hope they kind of like come out with a bang when it comes to point seven with like some real skins. Because, uh, you know, I I got the skin craving, you know, I, I, give, give them to me. I want them. Right. Bro, yeah. I'll tell you what. A little, so here, here's how I feel about it. I don't think they're go even though we want it, even though I think we should at least have a tease of a skin. You guys get to use the skin for the weekend and then it goes away back in the vault or something like something crazy like that, right? But I don't think they're going to give us any custom skin or any epic dope skin until full release. At best, we'll get what they teased last week an already pre-existing skin with vfx you'll get that that'll be that'll be enough to spice it up but all those cool concept skins that we saw of richter howitzer etc they're probably gonna be like no 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 we need these for full release because we need to make sure that on full release we're also profiting off of it you know what i'm saying we need to make sure that full release not only is a bang player wise but we need to make sure that it's successful monetarily so we can then show the investors look when we released look at the way our profits soared but they also did that intentionally because they're saving the content for the release. you know what i'm saying so that's probably what they'll end up doing makes yep, sense yep, to yep. me it makes sense but sad face right uh yeah. and honestly i who the fuck plays kalari anymore besides immune hey uh <laughs> 600 t6 yeah, he was going insane the entire tournament. Uncle Ari? the entire tournament. Yeah, and uh, I I had some stats, but I I closed it because I'm dumb. But uh, uh, Kari had a relatively nice win rate in our tournament, basically because of six. But that's it. Like mm -hmm. loot sticks, he he went crazy, went crazy well, on her. Speaking <laughs> of stats. And, and we're just leaving uh, a meta dot city and overall that you're obviously talking about tournament stats right but overall yeah. stats if you're looking at just kalari and overall stats she has a 49.46 win rate uh, but she's only got a 13.38 pick rate so that's what like, i'm saying bro like not right, that many people pick, people her. pick on her you pick yeah, kalari if you're a kalari man we don't need to talk about that that's fine you know like we're good we don't need her in the game anymore like the fact that she's there you can pick her if you want is fine but like i just do what you can to keep making her not be existent <laughs> bro i'll be honest so with really you don't like her huh i can't stand her well he used to he's a, he's a big I'm carry okay main so he doesn't really but care as, now as a, as a care when i was a carry mate i couldn't stand her ass because like oh i'm invisible now you're dead like okay well thanks that was awesome yeah i'm glad here i'm glad it came to play this game i'm dead 
So I, I just goes the Wolverine. Right there, we go. <laughs> well, I mean, in your defense, you're also you're family. also climbing that makes sense. rank wise, so you probably won't have as much of a trouble as you did back then, right? Fair point there. And then on top of the fact that, quite frankly, once you get into the MMR area where people know how to use a ward, or where people at least figure out that this Kalari has a built-in ward if she gets too close. <laughs> then at that point it's like okay okay wait a minute we we can manage this she's kind of squishy so granted unless you're cracked by all means there's some of you out there stay at home watching netflix or some shit don't go against me uh, <laughs> yeah, please, please yes un unless you're cracked I, I just don't think you're gonna see her that often and i find it interesting that such a low pick character got a common skin i think a common skin for a gideon might have been more useful for the community or a common skin for a sparrow already got a skin let's just but say maybe like, this is a common skin to help get those numbers boosted you think that's what it is try to inflate I mean, the numbers I, I, a little it's bit possible potentially hey we, 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 she's just nobody's really playing her let's give her let's give her some you know cool a uh, little more eye candy to it's play a with and like people are Pick red and crunch. Check that out. Just yep, check that second. theory. Maybe, maybe crunch needs some love too, and they're kind of throwing it that way, right? Pick red and crunch I mean, is eighteen point eight three. Okay, so still a little bit on the lower end side. Yeah. But Trix's boosted brings up a great point in the chat. If you play Kalari, you love Kalari. Like that's your bay. You know what I mean? So yeah, getting like that Trix's skin, like if that. you like red. Oh yeah, yeah. This is you're like this ain't common. I love this shit. That's a shiny red, bro. That's metallic. What do you say before that? I mean, that? if what uh, Trick said, Kalari is so behavior. So 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 All right. I that's, mean, if you think about it, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. That's, I mean, and then plus the red skin, that that metallic red on top of that, uh, that kind of makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you pick Kalari, you definitely iron your bed sheets. Confirmed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> confirmed for sure. <laughs> All right, next replay improvements. Uh, replay that. improvements. <laughs> Thank. We've been listening God. to your feedback and working hard to improve the recently added replay system. In this update, we've added uh, some extra functionality to keyboard and mouse and keep uh, mouse key bindings, as uh, well as uh, improve. Wait, what is keyboard and mouse key bindings? Why can't they? What is that? That's not weird. All right, mouse and keyboard. I was thinking keyboard right. and mouse, keyboard and mouse key, key bindings, bindings, as well as improving the bindings. <laughs> they could have just said those... key bindings. That implies right? keyboard and mouse. <laughs> Right. <laughs> That's what it threw me off of those using um, game pads. Uh, this does mean that some buttons have changed functions. So please check the updated tables below to avoid confusion. All right. Uh, so choice, you're obviously using this quite often with the uh, with PCC, right? Oh, so oh, yeah. how big is this for you? I, I mean, this was the difference. I mean, I, I used this thing for 10 hours last Saturday. And I had to switch when I when I wanted to kind of have like a nice drone view or a cinematic view of a huge team fight. I had to click with my mouse the uh, the drone button and then pull up my gamepad. I have an Xbox controller and then fly around a little bit. And then when I was done and wanted to go back to Hero Chase, I had to grab my mouse again click hero chase and then go back to my keyboard. So I, I was like constantly switching between my mouse and keyboard and my controller. And I literally day of this patch, I woke up early before work just to download it and try out the replay features. I can use my gamepad or Xbox controller the entire time. And it is fluid, solid, flawless, gorgeous, beautiful. I, 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 I can imagine I just love being it. able to hit a button and change that camera mode just made it the world yeah. of difference alone right there. Right. I yeah. could just use my Xbox controller the entire time instead of switching back and forth. And then you get this like weird jittering because I'm like uh, trying to figure it all out. But now, man, and they changed like up drone up and down to the triggers. So you get that really nice feathered like swoop in. It's yeah, so cinematic and just mm. thank he you. Said, thank you. Debs. Thank you. Simo. That's all right. <laughs> I don't know so. if you guys saw it, but I, I put like a huge, huge post in the in the Creator Guild Discord, um, talking about yeah you like you feedback. put a lot of a lot of feedback into the you know, in depth feedback in there. I totally check yeah. that all the time. And <laughs> and Alex, uh, one of the devs, and Ace actually got back to me a bunch, and they're they're really taking my 
um, feedback into consideration. And it just, it just feels nice that they're listening and doing stuff for right to make my job easier as an observer. <laughs> Well, shout out so, to you also, because I know plenty of people that are still trying to get into that creator guild. You know what I'm saying? So being in the creator guild is own is an achievement in its own. And having I, that easy access to the devs definitely doesn't come easy. So kudos. Yeah, sure. That was, so that just, was really incredible. Just by reading this, am I, is, is it safe to assume that the replay feature uh, does not support uh, PlayStation controllers? I'm not sure. I haven't um, tried. Yeah, I don't know. But I do know that I guess depending where no you go, PlayStation like, table. like if you go on Steam, Steam converts PlayStation controllers into Xbox controllers. So like if you hit square, you're automatically hitting this button. Or if you hit triangle, you're hitting Y, right? Like Steam automatically converts that. I don't know how that's going to go on the Epic game side, because Epic Games definitely is not as adapting when it comes to controllers he said i'm plugging that shit in right now and testing <laughs> it i will tell you in 30 seconds <laughs> exactly because i would think i mean uh, you're saying that it converts it to an xbox controller i would just i don't but i feel like the games that i have played not all games are as fluid like if you go on right, Origins I'm, I'm, not or if you go on I'm just talking about like i'm just talking about the you know the button layout right because like well, the biggest thing with xbox and playstation is the x button right they're in two different spots right so if you're playing madden on xbox and you're playing madden you go play madden on playstation and you see the x receivers open you're gonna hit the wrong button it just happens yeah well that's uh that's more of a person thing the system already knows that square on playstation is x on xbox like it already has that usually configured so when you press the correct button it'll happen you just okay. have to remember as a PlayStation player, like if, if that shit says, okay, so you're going to hit B to change your camera, that's circle. Just remember right. PlayStation player. But I'm I just saying, don't like, know that's how what, I, That's is. what I'm wondering. Are they going to, is it going to show the PlayStation buttons or is it going to show? Great question. The uh, Xbox. Well, Joker button, that's Gamer V3 in the chat says he plays with the PS controller all the time. Maybe and he's answer. playing the game on Epic. So uh, Joker, does it show? PlayStation, PlayStation buttons or he doesn't know he's he's got llama internet he doesn't <laughs> he won't he, he won't be but he's got llama internet they drive on the wrong side of the road and and let us know what's going <laughs> on <laughs> shout out to joker much love homie uh hashtag ometa hit joker up for making some dope background he'll set that up for you but um yes, yeah, joker's a beast but yeah it's i think it's nice again this is more tailored for you individuals that run the tournaments or Let's say, for example, a Joey, he's not here today, but Joey loves doing the those little replays and the coaching guys and whatnot. Shout out to other creators out there. Empty, Pinzo, Crashy, et cetera, right? Um, that could definitely make use of situations like this and just make content a little bit more yeah. smoother. Well, like this you is said, big shout out to creators. Joey. Shout out to Joey and shout out to Zygor, right? Those, those guys both use the replay system to, to go over vods of mine and help me as an as an offlaner learn the offlane and get better at it and i've already because of those two i've already climbed i told you guys just before we started the show i've already climbed from bronze to so to silver you know in, in the uh, you know obviously using ometa.city mmr uh, it's important to bring system, things whatever they is you know whatever that is like it's different obviously but uh, I've, I've climbed out of that to silver you know just with their help and uh my win rates definitely you know increased you know greatly with that uh so big help to them so yeah with that replay system they were able to go over and find some of that stuff big huge improvements joker Appreciate says it, it shows the ps buttons um, PS buttons, okay. so dope but by the way while we're on the subject of zygor shout out to zygor and his little uh his little map video with the heads made you know the it's, it's made its rotations through people's DMs. We're going to talk about that here a little bit after the uh, the update, the patch itself. So stay tuned for that. But um, yeah, it's ironically, the moment that video came out, I watched it. And then like five seconds later, Zygor came in the chat and everybody was talking about it to Zygor. Zygor was like, am I famous now? Wait a minute. And I'm like, bro, you made a, you made a good fucking video. We'll, we'll talk about it here in a second. But let's go back to the, uh, to the update so we don't get too crazy down the road balance changes <laughs> balance changes my boy grux 
As mentioned already, we're giving the Rhino some love this week, buffing his passive to help keep the bleed relevant even in the later stages of the game, which until now has become especially unnoticeable when your opponents start to pick up more sustain. We're also pumping up his double pain a bit to help him retain some laning strength against matchups uh, that uh, he really should be winning. Stairs at Severog. All right, bloodlust base damage increase from uh, five to uh, so from five plus two per level to five plus three per level, and then the double pain base damage increased uh, up to 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 at its levels, um, and crush bonus physical power scaling decrease from 80 percent to 70 percent. So, doo -doo. Is this actually and, a big difference? Uh, I, I don't know. Do you think he needed a buffing? I, I didn't think he was oh, yeah, huge. Huge. Yeah. Definitely needed a buffing. Yes. His I, win rate in the PCC is like, uh, I, what was it, 18% or something like that? It was something really low. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, he's low getting in if you play him. Or at least uh, was at, before the update, right? Like, higher, maybe he's in a better spot. At higher MMRs, it, it is definitely a uh, a tough one to, to play as. Um, I'm, I'm talking i'm using joey joey's not here so i'm using his you know comments uh on our video um he once you get to higher mmrs he's really hard to play uh to use because he's countered really easily with a lot of players um joey just posted a video um it came up to me today uh and he played as grux with the this new update um and you could definitely notice the bleed the bleed is actually being noticed. Uh, he was, you know, he would do a double pain. They get the bleed on him, and next thing you know, he was getting a he was getting a little more kill secures with the bleed because of that happening. So, um, it's definitely definitely beneficial, and he it was needed in my opinion. But I'm also a Grux biased fan, so uh, I will admit that Grux was my first master skin in Paragon. Noise, no shot, really, Mister Face, my first one. Yeah, M Mr. Faze, Bellic, and Muriel. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. nothing First about that says Grux. Grux is my well, master. That's what tells you he mastered Grux and he figured this is a trash hero. Let's move to the next one. That's it's, what it's a tragedy. I mean, there were some tragic times for Grux in like version 42, version 44, until you started building that one red card that lets you blow people up. Uh, and oh, then everyone did Death it, Crawler. and then they nerfed him into the ground. Was that the original and name then, of it, Deathcrawler? The one that you would nuke? Deathcrawler Grox was, the, was the, the thing that was... It was one just, shot? You, yeah, you were one shot everybody. You're just going through yeah. just destroying everybody. Yep. It's the only then, card that I, I know from the game, and I only know it because of the reference of Deathcrawler Grox. Um, but I wasn't a Grox main then. I, I'm literally a Grox main now. You know, I was I was a Murdoch main for the longest time through all of these... You know, from Paragon to Parazombies, like, that's what I've thing. always been. Right, it, it is a wild change, but now that I'm understanding offlane like a lot more, like I this is like oh wait this is this is different. It's not the same, so uh, I enjoy it. All right, on to our boy Huddy, uh, his boy Howitzer. Howitzer continues to be a problem to the current meta, so we're gonna be a problem to him. We're continuing to target his damage potential, uh, part uh, particularly his slow grenades, uh, helping decrease his zone potential and lower how reliably uh, he can he can poke from a distance. Slow grenades base damage decreased uh, to 30, 50, 70, 90, 110 at respective levels. Slow grenades secondary grenade damage decreased to uh, 6, 10, 14, 18, 22 at prospective levels. So I got to say, Howitzer it definitely is a hey, they have a Howie, so yeah, you, you better step up your A game, Gideon or Bellica or whatever, right? Howie's gonna be nuts. But I never looked at OP Howie and thought them grenades are busted, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like that's not what to me, like I'm like, okay, that's the problem with Howie. I'm like, yo, maybe it's just the fact that he's overtuned a little bit across the board. Right? Homie has a get out of jail free card that nukes you at the same time. He's got his R2000, which is like the longest range ability as a mage. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I think, may I think you're maybe, right. maybe up there with gadgets, AOE, well, gadgets, if you consider yeah, the yeah, edge but, of the AOE, right? Right. Um, but yeah, like in general, like I. Don't call bro, me out like that. <laughs> bro, from the, from the comment that says he's been a problem, so we're going to be a problem to him. And then they only nerfed the, the grenades. I'm like, yeah. yeah. 
It, lo it looks like you're just poking a bear. That doesn't look like you actually are, you're actually a problem. I was I was talking about this last night on my stream, and uh, a, a couple of people in the chat like pointed out to me that they also nerfed like combustion, which was one of his like rush cards, howitzer's rush cards. Because yep. I mean, I, so that's uh, yeah, like a semi sort of yeah. extra nerf. But that but, applies I mean, to everybody. The problem is like if right. everybody built combustion, Howie was still too strong. You know what right. I'm saying? And so, I mean, I guess across the board, he got like a sort of nerf. But again, like you were saying, the right click of all things to nerf, like his little slow grenades. I'm not sure if that was the right thing to do. But yeah. Who am, I? who am I? You know what this feels like? And, I don't, you know, it sounds a little bit weird, like maybe calling out a dev or something. But this feels like a dev got shit on by the slow grenades. And they were like, that's a fucking problem. Why am I slow? <laughs> like, why does the slow do that much damage? I got taken four fucking times and it melted me. It sounds like a dev just had a really bad time with the slow grenades. And it was like, I wouldn't have died if it wasn't for those fucking grenades. That's the problem. <laughs> That's the only thing I can think of, bro. Because outside of that, it makes no sense why to target his grenades out of anything. Personally. Yeah. Uh, so I want to bring this up. Um, Fox McCloud you know, makes a comment chat, and it's not that's something I just want to gloss over. I want to talk about it real quick. Um, just because the the uh, nothing against Fox, but the way it's worded, I'm not a fan of it. Um, the toxicity. How do you think... And I'll read, it, I'll read it on those. How do you think Predecessor can battle against toxicity? I know it's part of the MOBAs and multiplayer games, but when the community is openly bullying autistic people, uh, that seems a bit much. No? Question mark. So, um, the statement of when the community is openly doing it, that, like I, I'm part of the community. Choice, you're part of the community. When are you part of the community? That statement makes it sound like everybody is doing it. Now, if that's the question, the statement should have said, when part of the community is openly doing this, what do you do to you know stop that? That's a different question. And I do think it doesn't get taken. Okay, out, I, I see you where know, you're coming from. Care. Like the, the statement you know, but, itself but was saying that the community, a little bit like too the, much. Like that's just saying that, like, hey, the press community is okay with this. No, I'm not okay with that, right? Now, the other thing right. is what I'm seeing with that, um, you, you, hey, Fox, you're saying it's widespread. I played this game four days a week for four hours plus. I sometimes even play it more than that because I, I was played this whole weekend. I've yet to see anything about this. I mean, I will say I'm not saying it's not there. I was going to say saying, I, I haven't seen it. I will say in the defense of Fox, we as content creators, not like everybody knows who we are, right? But when people recognize a name, they do tone that shit down a little bit just because right. they don't want to get reported. Yeah, I'm not saying it's like not. That. I'm not you know saying it's not I mean? happening. I do know that if you are able to get people the information, the and, and like like I'm literally screenshots, you know, with names and and things that are being said, and we can if you get the people, I'll I'll put myself out there. Send me DMs of these pictures of, of, of screenshots of people doing this, and we can push this. I've already seen somebody else already get banned from the game just recently because the thing that's happening because us partners have been trying to do our best to take care of this. OK, so again, Fox, I, I'm not I'm sorry that people are going through it. I'm yeah, sorry it's happening. I'm not trying to say that it's not happening. How I'm just saying to say that the community Replays thing. That, thing. That, it's easy to report right. now. Yep. So let's let's help take care of it. Let's use I, I want to use this platform. Anybody that anybody here listening and watching YouTube, watching live, whatever. If you get that stuff, take a snippet, you know, like you type put in the Windows key, type in SNIMP and it comes up with a snip tool. You can literally take a screenshot of it. Send it to me. All right. And I do want to point out, we'll push it as far as like feedback to predecessor. There are tools to help prevent stuff like that. It's just a it's just a very fine line because the only real way that you can prevent somebody from saying it is to have a word scanner in there and either have words blocked or muted completely right and then at that point yeah. it depends on the strictness of the scanner um you're, you're not going to be able to type out some normal words because that normal word might be a curse word in, in a different language for all you know so it it's a very fine line there's definitely ways that they could approach it but Honestly, man, I know this isn't a perfect solution, but reporting them, muting them, 
and just making sure that that evidence gets to the proper person is night and day because even just a right. simple report in game that that eventually gets a list of in-game reports you know what i'm saying like that's going to take time to get to, depending on the situation but if you can get a screenshot and send that shit straight to a mod even right in the discord or send it to one of us like we were saying like anything that gets sent to any of us we're like all right i'll make sure they get seen to the right person like we said we're in the creators guild we all have access direct access to the developers we can send them a direct message and be like hey real quick what do you think about this or hey could you look into this somebody just reported it not cool and we can kind of expedite the process a little bit for you for sure but a toxicity in mobas is unfortunately a common thing that shouldn't be normalized and it right. is one of those things that we either handle it ourselves by reporting muting continuing etc right and hopefully the developers take action or the developers themselves take preventative measures but then that gets restricted amongst everybody right so it's it's a little fine line there as to which one you guys would prefer i'm assuming they'll take polls on it eventually maybe they're considering these options down the road um but honestly most mobas don't filter what you say they just say report them and we'll get them on the back end at least most mobas right right but, so yeah yeah well one of my favorite uh messages that i've seen from from ace rgs ace is uh thanks he's been perma banned and that was a few days ago so it's it's working they are watching these types of people so again just just to you know kind of expand on what they're saying send it in send and, those reports in and we'll get it we'll get it done oh, and shout out to him so, i'm so sorry some uh, majestic in chat just said install chat gpt into the game and have it scan all the hey man ai is taking over they eat it's not impossible to have ai scan the sentences and it'll mm, what's the word what's the correct choice of word i want to use here it'll very precisely choose words based off of the pattern and be able to be like oh that's hate speech not doing that one nope so it's not impossible uh, predecessor keep an eye out Keep an eye out. That's not a terrible majestic. idea, honestly. That is smart, bro. <laughs> I didn't even think about yeah. it. That's smart. Instead of using like a blanket search word tool or whatever, like, yo, that's becoming a readily accessible tool for a lot of businesses. They easily could not only implement it into that portion, but into others to help automate. Uh, all right, we're going to get a little bit too deep. Go ahead. Right. <laughs> So uh, huge shout out to Ace as well, because that that kind of you're talking about choice that was done on the weekend, uh, like when yeah. the time, like when the devs are having their time off or whatever. And there was other people, you know, doing it like there was there was a couple things that were happening that some that some partners were able to post some screenshots with uh, and a mod came in and was like, all right, we're, we'll see what we can do. And then all of a sudden Ace came up with the with the, with that statement. Bam. And it's like, all right. So uh, it, it is getting worked on. People are, you know, things are happening. It does take time. Uh, you know, Fox, you reference fault. Uh, fault didn't have the fastest things happening either, but they were way, they were working on it. Things were happening, right? So it just takes time. And you, but you need to report. You can't sit there and watch things happen and like be like, okay. I hope something happens to this guy if you it's not going to happen if you don't actually report the guy all right so again screenshots sending to me sending to I, i'm i know i i can't be the only partner that is like hey only send it to me all right you can send it to me send it to my mods you can send it to other people other partners that you would talk to if, if you don't have me in your dms there's other you know people out there um yeah and i'm sure and, that and you it's can unfortunate it that you saw that box and that somebody had to go through that shit like just straight up bullying and that there was a group of them I do know in past, uh, well, let's just say not even say past, in other versions of Paragon remakes as well as in Predecessor, there are a group of toxic individuals that'll just start ganging up on people and shit like that. And that's really the shit that we got to shut down off the yep. rip, to be honest with you. And especially yeah. when you can identify as like, hey, these three or these four, look at this screenshot. This is the shit they were saying. Bringing that yep. up, putting them on the spotlight is step number one to know who needs to get kicked from the discord or who needs to get perma banned from chat. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yep. Get them out. So, but I mean, like, like I said, I, I personally, I played this game four days, at least four days a week, Monday, you know, I guess three days, yeah, four days a week, you know, and then there's times on the weekends I'm playing it as well. 
and I'm not seeing that stuff. So I can't report it myself if I don't have it, right? I can't take screenshots and report myself. So give me that information. I'll 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 gladly go into our, our little partnership we have and and at, you know RGSA's myself. Like, hey, this needs to be taken care of. You know, so the more we can take care of that, the more we can we can work on that. So again, I don't want to gloss over that. That's definitely something I'm not I'm not happy with either. So let's take care of it and, and when we can move on from there. But um and phase. Right. Phase. Uh, it's no big secret that FaZe has struggled a little bit since her release, so uh, we're lending her a hand in the early laning phase uh, with some base damage bumps and uptime changes on her Energy Lance ability. Uh, we'll be looking into further changes for uh, her for her down the road, but they'll require more testing that will uh, that we could squeeze in ahead of this balance pass. Uh, so you can expect those at slightly later dates. Uh, this one's a bug fix, fix an issue where the blind from uh, Psychic Flare was not being affected by tenacity. I didn't know that and it would be affected by tenacity. Let me just throw that out there. Yeah, I didn't. I thought I didn't tenacity just had to do with CC, not a bl blind, but I guess it's a status effect. Is that it's, how it goes? Yeah, it's technically a CC. It's a crowd control. Yeah, sort of. Sort of, I would know, say it's a like soft CC road. though. It's not. It's a soft <laughs> CC though. It's not a hard CC. And I thought tenacity was a hard CC situation. But I could. No, be it does slows. I, I'm pretty sure it affects slows as well, which is okay, technically yeah, a right, soft you're CC. Right. You're right. You're right. So, uh, uh, okay, yeah. I don't know. That's uh, that's interesting for sure. I'm glad they fixed it. We don't like bugs. Uh, base physical power increased from 46 to 52. Energy Lance base damage increased to 60, 90, 120, 150, 180. Um, Energy Lance bonus damage decreased uh, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90. Uh, Energy Lance scaling increased from 40 to 50%. Uh, Energy Lance bonus damage scaling decreased uh, from 40% to 25%. Energy Lance cooldown decreased for, uh, to 18, 17, 16, 15, 14. So a little bit better early game for her energy lance but uh i i've heard from people that she still just kind of feels almost the same she's not much different um yeah. they're still trying to figure out like how to really use her and well, yeah, uh they made her just think of it like this like realistically so in the early levels let's say the first three levels right you do you went from doing 40 base damage to 60 right but then the bonus damage got decreased by 10. So realistically, you're doing now 10 more damage, which early game 10 more damage ain't shit if you just wasted a whole ability. Does that make sense? Right? And I know it scales per take, but you get what I'm saying. Like realistically, doesn't affect her that much. And then by the time the late game comes in, it's like, okay, so now late game level 18, I'm so glad her base damage is doing 60 more because that makes a difference, right? And then on top of that, the bonus damage decreased and the scaling 10%. So you might benefit uh, from it a little bit. So now instead of doing a whole 250, okay, you know what? We adjusted it. Now you're doing 295. You know what I'm saying? So it's, <laughs> so I get it, but it, realistically, this was more of a, hey, let's nudge her in this direction, see how she kind of feels overall. But I think this goes very much into what Bearded has brought up in the past. The fact that they're changing a little bit too much at once. And it's almost like they kind of zero themselves out just a little bit. A little bit of a net buff. But it kind of zeroes out. Because if they would have literally just sat there and been like, okay, so we're increasing base damage. Let's see how it goes. Worst comes to worst. We'll adjust something else next batch on her lance. That might have been like, hey, that feels nice. Or it might be a little bit too strong. Okay, so now... Let's decrease the bonus damage. Let's see how that goes. But like increasing base, decreasing the additional damage on top of the base, and then also affecting the scaling. It's just like, yo, hold on. Right. Like, uh, like I understand you guys probably went through those stages yourself in the, you know, in the testing and everything. Excuse me and everything. But maybe that's not necessarily where she be as of you know like with community feedback and such maybe wait for community feedback before applying so many different just an idea i i think 
they need to keep her where she's at damage wise and give her her regen back my biggest thing with phase before is she did too much damage and she also it was basically a, a, a support that was able to set up the kill easily because she did so much damage and also keep the the uh carry uh healed to where like the carry could just the sustain in the lane was insane yeah like she and did a little bit too much all at once right I got so you. and it's like all right well like right now she's supposed to like she doesn't do and there's no sustain for her you know she's not sustaining her carry in, in lane but she's also not doing the damage to, that decker does so why why would you pick her over decker there's no there's no point in it right decker's got more cc in her kit and and does more damage well like you might as well just pick decker right and then if you're looking at uh muriel or narbash why would you pick her over muriel narbash muriel narbash has sustain and she, uh, muriel's got the shields what Heal does she have pump. to counter that she does it she's not doing enough damage to output to to, to counter them so yeah. i think if you give her keep her at her where she's not just doing damage because we don't need another decker in here anyways you know Keep her where she's not doing damage. Give her her regen in her kit. Allow the carry to at least have some kind of sustain a little bit. Be, and But the carry is the one that has to do the damage, you know, per, in, in a sense. She's just kind of, I'm here. I'm keeping you safe. I can root maybe. I can do a couple things with you. But I'm keep my whole thing is to stay linked to you and give you your, your regen. I think that would be the best play for her. What if adjusting all these things, maybe as opposed to kind of focusing on fixing her damage output, right? What if they focus her more on the CC side? Maybe instead of adjusting all these damages on base damage, bonus damage, scaling, cooldown, etc. What what if they just adjusted it to where, hey, now it takes two less ticks for you to get rooted? That's an impactful change without you having to adjust all the crazy damage numbers, right? Worth throwing out there. On top of that, I just really think they have a little bit of an identity issue with her from the get-go. Because you're making her very support very hey i'm gonna pull you out sort of situation but then you give her an attack speed scaling passive that doesn't scale like it doesn't help her abilities at all she doesn't have an ability that the more basic attacks you land you get a stack and then you get to claim that stack when you flash or something nothing related to the attack speed whatsoever it's just a random attack speed passive on a character that has nothing to do with attack speed it feels like the most wasted passive in the whole game to me yeah, her gameplay loop has been kind of weird because you do want to stay behind people. That's kind of like where you naturally want to be because you want to be able to pull your ADC out. And but the only problem is your flash is all the way back there when your ADC is in front of you. Plus, your lance goes way further than your auto attacks do. So you're not auto attacking because you're just kind of lancing from the back end. It is kind of awkward. And I feel like her gameplay loop is just kind of lost in her kit. And that's, I mean, that's where I come from, especially when I loved FaZe back in the day, because I could do that damage and I could, you know, it felt good to like pull people into a fight blind and like just do a bunch of damage with the Lance and then get out or die either way. But I feel like her gameplay loop just feels kind of off with her passive and just the way that they, they don't have that, the link health thing going on, the passive going on. I, that's just kind of my perspective on that one. It's just interesting, honestly. Because mm -hmm. again, yeah, I'm with you. You have a blind that you have to be point blank, regardless if it's an ally or yourself. You have ranged attacks that scale attack speed for some random reason, I guess to help the poking damage, right? And then a lance and a pull that are both beyond normal range that encourage poking from a distance like it's she's she is a little bit all over the place i would like to see some sort like if you're gonna make her something attack speed based right give me some give me some spice in there be like hey people with stacks of whatever the fuck you want to call the stack that you've hit with your basic attacks like if they hit two every stack that you land on somebody with your basic attack now your lance takes one less tick to root them you hit them three times three less ticks to root them bam forget about the damage like you want you're gonna incorporate her kit into the rest of it and now it'll encourage the fact that you go ba 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 lance now they got rooted even faster and they took three autos along the way like make it a little bit spicier along that side as opposed to just 
randomly two different things that don't seem too cohesive, right? Just throwing it yeah. out there. Yeah, and her ultimate is a buffing ultimate. So if these auto attack or auto attack speed buff it doesn't buff her or her ally like yeah the ultimate doesn't make sense with the with that either. right what if what if but what if her auto attack speed or her attack speed buff or um what is the word passive there we go actually buffs whoever she's linked to with some oh, auto attack speed that would be spicy the more she's, she scales on attack speed she shares that attack right. speed scaling with her character. Yeah, and now her whole like her whole uh view as a character is a buffing character. So yeah. what you want to be doing is buffing your linked ally. And that would be spicy when you consider items like Marshall, when you consider items like um Van Guardian that share armor with allies near you. You could literally go into a full buffing your ally build with her, which isn't traditionally too common. That would be spicy to see. I wouldn't I wouldn't be mad at that. Maybe a little broken with Marshall, but maybe that's what it takes. Yeah. They got a phase and Mar they're going to rush Marshall. You know that Carrie's going to have the attack speed advantage. We got to shut that phase yep. down. So that might be the yep. little pizzazz that helps separate her from the rest. Not a bad idea. I like that. All right. I'm OK to yeah. go to the next one. All right. Items. T2 Ruthless Broadsword. Uh, it's always been a little awkward uh, to shake off those pesky corrode stacks. Uh, we're pulling it uh, in line with other stacking conven uh, conventions and decreasing its potency to help tanks hold their ground slightly better, even when being shredded. Uh, corrode physical armor shred magnitude decreased from 5% per stack to 4% per stack. Corrode duration increased uh, from 2 seconds to 3 seconds and corrode stacks now fall off altogether rather than one at a time all right crests leaf song leaf songs uptime makes it a little harder to pick up when uh pitched against uh, other op when pitched against other options uh so we're letting it be used more uh leniently to allow easier engagements and disengages uh, Phantom Rush cooldown decreased from 120 seconds to 100 seconds. Still All a right. beefy cooldown. <laughs> That's pretty yeah. beefy. Yeah, especially compared to like if we're looking at the crest that I like to use, the uh, uh, Icecorn Talons. It's like a 35 second. It might be 25 second cooldown. It's pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's like 35 seconds from like the moment, 35, 40 seconds from the moment you start it. But then by right. the time the effect is over, you only got like 20, 30 seconds to go until you can cast it. Right. That's pretty nutty. So, yep. Uh, carry Viper. Uh, matching the broadsword changes above, Viper's evolved forms are also getting the, the same adjustments. Corrode physical armor. Are, yeah, it's the same exact stuff as the Corrode. Uh, anything to do with the Corrode is the same thing we talked about the, the uh, broadsword. Yep. It gets um, applied throughout Deathstalker as well. Yep, yep. Assassin Deathstalker. Again, matchmaking the broadsword change. Uh, Milady. Milady is uh, the first on the chopping block for a cut to its damage potential. Currently, it's a very powerful first uh, buy because the item scales far too fast. Uh, we're decreasing the infinite scaling potential so that heroes don't ramp up too fast on their first few procs. Uh, demise additional damage per stack decrease from 10 to 5. Pain Weaver. Pain Weaver is also another very powerful uh, buy for assassins, and thus is getting a small nerf to its uh, to its effect to stop certain purple rascals running rampant around the battlefield. Uh, splice bonus physical p uh, penetration per stack decreased from four to three. Splice bonus movement speed per stack decreased from four percent to three percent. Yeah. yeah, watching Soul Reaper run around the map as Feng Mao going supersonic speeds freaks me out so i'm okay i'm okay with a little bit of a movement speed uh debuff or whatever uh yeah you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm talking naughty, about naughty, naughty, so naughty, reaper naughty. freaks me out <laughs> the reaper i think that's because of his name out. to be honest with you <laughs> <laughs> the reaper of souls it fits <laughs> um all right 
Fighter, Augmentation. Augmentation is a very powerful first item pickup for Crunch and provides too much of a spike uh, relative to his uh, other options. We're toning down its damage potential, which will hopefully direct uh, directly affect Crunch's currently too powerful order of the game. True strike, true strike total physical power scaling decreased from 50% to 40%. All I right. Need, I need to know if they mean crunches early game before level five or include uh, or including level six. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like uh, yeah, where know. are they drawing the early game line? Because before he gets his ult, I don't necessarily feel like he's too powerful running through the lane, right? The moment he gets his ult, though, I right, right, that's he, that's a spice, bro. You should have fucked him up before he got his ult for sure. Yeah. Are you but are you running augmentation on him though? I've seen a lot of people use mutilator I, on him I, first. Yeah, that's I, don't, a, I don't run augmentation first. So I think but I think that's what where that issue was. So I you would have to I would have to figure that out. But I don't play crunch, so I don't know yet. So I, I wouldn't anybody who's played crunch, if you got it in chat, let us know. Uh what the feel of this if it changed if you run augmentation first. Um I think that would be the issue there. Cause obviously again, this isn't a nerf to crunch is early game this is a nerf to augmentation on crunch for the early game which so also affects think, everybody else yeah right so i think that would be the biggest thing so you're right if you're running if you're running uh what do you you probably use mutilator first on crunch or something like that you know if you're on a mutilator that's not being affected here that's the year crunch's early game is fine until he gets his ultimate mm, so maybe yeah fair point Basilisk. Yeah, also, the corrode situation. Point to above to the broadsword. Um, Mage. Azacor. Uh, with most first item spikes getting taken down on Notch, Azur, Azur needs a similar treatment. Uh, this is to help uh, match the item spikes a bit more so that Azur isn't... I always want to say Azacor, then it doesn't put it here, so I like, hesitate here. Uh, isn't as overwhelming in uh, an option uh, as we decrease the damage potential of other more offensive uh, first buys. Arcane Mage maximum mana scaling decreased from 4% to 3.5%. Combustion. Another victim of abuse in early game, combustion grants a mage too much uh, kill threat on the first item spike, and it so is getting nerfs uh, to its initial damage and uptime. The cooldown change could also stop heroes like Howitzer getting off multiple rotations of the, uh, the effect easily in extended trades. Uh, pyro uh, base damage decreased from 70 to 55, pyro cooldown increased from 12 uh, seconds to 15 seconds. Big nerf. Um, so, because it references Howie, Howie in here, um, does his minds proc this every time? That's a great question. I don't know if it stacks on each other, but his minds very well could. Uh, his minds trigger it because it's an ability damage, right? Right. Um, I, I guess maybe, so I maybe that's maybe why they might have is... targeted the minds. Maybe it's an individual stack. That keeps getting applied yeah because this nerf does affect uh like gideon per se but gideon doesn't have he's not just putting you know five different meteors out there that you're running into you know and getting you know getting it proc every time so, so that might this be is still maybe, kind of maybe this is still kind of more one. of a nerf towards howie just just obvious an idea um World Breaker. World Breaker is a, a big offender due to a lot of uh, its interactions, but for now to wrangle it in line with other options, uh, here uh, we're, we're also decreasing its damage potential. Fiend percent increased, magical damage decreased. That's what? <laughs> Fiend percent increased, magical damage decreased from 4% per stack to 3% per stack. That. <laughs> that word increase and decrease being in the same sentence really throws me through a loop when I read that. Yeah. Like what? <laughs> you can tell I'm not a mid main because I don't. I, I'm guessing this is just one of the uh, passives with this word uh, with this uh, item. So it's a fiend percent increased. Um, increased that, magical damage decreased. Increased dam All right. Yeah. That's weird. It, it, it just I don't know. All right. Wraith leggings. Uh, Rift Leggings, especially alongside Combustion, is providing uh, far too much uh, of a burst spike for mages in the early game. So like a few items today, it's also taking a hit. Uh, this item uh, to its burst potential. This time to its burst potential. Um, Carnage percent increase, magical damage decreased. 
from 20% to 15%. Oh my gosh, quit putting those words together. Okay. Uh, tanks. Crystalline Kyrus. I don't know. I don't know how to say that word. I, I call it Kyrus. I don't know. I could be wrong. Crystalline creates some challenging uh, matchups for heroes like Shinbi and Countess. So we're shifting some of its damage output into its defensive stats. Health increased from 200 to 275. Uh, volatile maximum health scaling decreased from 3% to 2% and dynamo dynamo is also providing too much offensive uh potential and sees a lot of abuse from support roles due to its powerful shred and that keeps uh our tanks quaking in their boots uh decreasing both the potency and duration should give uh said tanks more wiggle room uh when navigating fights against dynamo users immobilizer percent shred decreased from 30 percent to 20 percent immobilizer shred duration decreased from four seconds to three seconds and dynamo is proven to be very nutty in this recent berry tank meta like the fact that you can land a stun and shred armor it automatic like that right there is a reason not to use phase to be honest with you the fact that yeah. you can just land a stun and shred armor honestly i think steel support feels great in the current meta not only because you have an extra tank down the road but because when you build that dynamo it's like bro my carry doesn't even have to rush a pen card i like i build the early pen for him and then we just destroy whatever tank comes our way mm -hmm. like it, dynamo is strong hella strong right now like it yeah now there's a couple of bug fixes here yep. um we want to read those bug fixes or just kind of put yeah. them up on the screen yeah. it's a quick one i mean if there was a list like that we've had before sorry you guys can just read them but i'll get i'll read these ones all right fix an issue where corrode was not correctly applying on drongo and grux passives um fix an issue where tainted guard scaling was incorrect fix an issue where murdoch stim pack was cleansing slows Fix a bug where Phase's telekinetic link, her RMB, was not playing sound effects correctly. Fix a bug where uh or a debug sphere uh would appear when spectating players while uh dead. Fix issues uh, related to uh replays when uh viewed back uh using controller inputs. And resolved a bug related to a to player positioning on the minimap. Additional bugs, fixes, and patch notes uh, may be added to this post once the update is live. Nothing else was added, but uh, I do. What are you guys' thoughts? Speaking of bugs and how this goes, um, what as they go, instead of making a whole new hot patch, yeah, like, they, they're putting their blog, hot fixes at the top of the existing patch, at the top of the existing that. patch, and then putting the date of when the hot patch went live. What are you guys' thoughts on that? I mean, it saves space. And a little bit more organized yeah you know where i'm coming from they're just editing the one page as opposed to creating a totally separate page and millions of pages that we got to sort through later you know what i mean right so yeah. i like that portion but it also does get a little bit confusing unless you know what to look for mm -hmm. what do you think about nope, that choice I... yeah i mean i i see what you guys are saying uh I think it's nice to have less pages. I think it's probably also nicer on their servers or whoever's hosting their actual website to not have five bazillion pages <laughs> for their website. But I would also like uh, if there was something added since this uh, patch notes went out to the actual like patch going live, if there was a change or an added bug fix, for that to be like bolded or like some have some sort of stamp just so we know that that was actually like an extra bug that was you know put in in between the patch notes and the actual patch going live bearded i i like it for us the people who the the non new players to the system right we know what we're doing we've been going over pat these patches we we know where to go i like it in the sense of what you said like we're not fumbling through patches like uh with, with fault right 
there'd be times we'd be taught we would do the fault partner panel and somebody would bring something up but when did this happen and i literally have to go through all i'm like okay 37 I know patches it's, in i'm the past. going through all these different patches and like, i'm all right this is a hot fix patch this is that patch this is that patch all right but which one is it right does all right well now it's like all right a lot all the hot fixes that were from you know version six are all right here you know i can now grab all of these all right I can go through look or it was here this is when it was happening this is the date that it happened so i love that fact there um but i think when it comes to it, it might be a little harder for a new player to kind of navigate and understand what's going on you know uh, especially because it, it what it also goes from top down they put it at the very top of the blog right and it's like what if they want if they're going in it's like the main patch version six patch is this right but now you're putting all the hotfixes at the top and it's like you read it it's like all right and then like it, some of that might negate some of the stuff that's going down like you you reread it it's all right and then you go you read farther down it's like all right, let's say they let's say for example they also with the hotfix they did a balance change too because they realized that something actually the, the, this hero is just off like well, hey we made a change and it's not working or an item is just it's not working let's let's we're going to revert this back or we're going to make a, a change back right so you read that it's like all right uh we'll say ice corn talents it, we removed the you know this passive on it all right and you read that in the hot fix and then you go further it's like all right ice corn talents this passive was adjusted from this to this it's like well wait a minute it was removed but now it says that it's here and it's like this and which one's which right and, and having that reading those and if you just read down the page just a little off i mean i know they put the dates there but like not everybody as we've said before in multiple of these shows not everybody reads everything so you're going through you just kind of read the bullet points and you're not reading the dates that those are posted can be a little hectic for people but overall he said eh he each his own <laughs> right yeah i mean it, it you're you you know you, you you live and you learn you, you 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 you're gonna that person's gonna go in and and pick again ice corn talents just as an example they're gonna pick that and then they're gonna see it in game it's like what that didn't change and they're gonna bring it up to somebody they're gonna reference something and then they're gonna learn so that's just how it's gonna happen but so overall i think it's it's good because again the more you pay attention to patches the easier it is for you to navigate we Let's like patch notes. Yes. True. Gives yep. us something to talk about for sure. Right? You want to hit up the, uh, give Zygor his quick little shout out as far as the map video that he made? No, yeah. Right, I mean, we, back. Yeah. You guys, you guys lead the way because I haven't had a chance to watch yet. I'm, I'm definitely going to be watching it though. All right. So just to kind of do a quick little overview, Zygor made a, a request is what we'll call it right so zygor made an yeah. amazing video i'm not going to play any of the audio please go watch his video and support his channel go subscribe to him uh but he made an amazing video as far as requesting the predecessor that predecessor needs to make a bigger map and he did an amazing job in his video Link is in the chat right now perfect and he did an amazing job of in the video as far as explaining why they needed a bigger map he justified it and did comparisons with other maps for example um he even shows here the history of paragon and their maps how they made monolith into a smaller map because they thought the legacy was just too big because back in the legacy days they had like an hour long map right so he goes he goes into great great detail and and shout out to zygor again but i i do want to just kind of bring up the subject specifically to somebody like bearded that hasn't watched the video I'm, I'm putting a picture on the screen a comparison that he does so you can see what the predecessor map looks like compared to the monolith map specifically the predecessor's, all, predecessor's already bigger than monolith it's bigger in a way the outer portions the outer camps are there the t1s are a little bit wider therefore technically making rotations a little bit more uh, a little bit longer theoretically right but if you notice river to river is still about the same you get where i'm coming from so technically mid lane rotating to the river entrance still about the same as far as that goes it's just the extremities the actual pathing if you're running all the way down the outer lanes that's a little bit longer yeah or rotation wise still pretty similar 
if you get where I'm coming from. If we're talking about river yeah, to river no, entrances. Now, seeing that picture alone, and then actually he even puts the legacy map on top of that to kind of show you how much even further it was before. And then he goes from there, like he puts League of Legends map, he goes in and then puts a Dota map on top of that, just to show that the more successful MOBAs actually have a larger map compared to what we're playing on. Like substantially larger. And let's even take Dota out of it. Let's just use League of Legends, which is the most popular MOBA in the world. That's a substantially larger map as far as travel times. So do you bearded feel like the map is too small playing it? Or do you think you wouldn't have noticed unless somebody brought it up? Let me ask you that specific. Uh, I do think it's it's too small playing it. Uh, rotation times are, are pretty. I, I know as um, starting playing off lane, I can see my uh, enemy off laner or even a mid laner come and gank me and, and not have their not be affected by that they're not losing or getting hurt by it i've had plenty of games where like i've had like it's crazy like i've had people i'm, I'm starting to play off lane i become an off lane main and i've had a lot of people come into my chat and tell me because i'll be sitting there i'll be i'm getting camped by the by the either jungler or the the mid or even all the whole team will rotate over to me i don't know if it's because my name if people just want to screw me over or what but i'm like why why is everybody over here right but i'm you know building tanky grux and i'm able to sit here and hold my own but my team's not taking advantage of it. Like they're like my other teammates aren't pushing lanes or whatever, or like, hey, they're all over here. Let's get like get a tower down at least. And you don't get punished for doing the rotations. So I can I can definitely tell that it's something that it needs to get wider it, just because of rotation times. That needs to get fixed in that sense. Yeah, you, you literally can gank solo lane, have enough time to back and defend T2 on duo. If mm -hmm. it comes down to it. Now, yeah. Choice, you got a chance to watch the video. He goes yeah. very precise. He shows different examples, etc. Just looking at this picture here of League of Legends compared to Predecessor. Would Predecessor be a better game if it actually got increased by, let's say, 30%? What do you think? I think yes. Because we for a few reasons there's a lot of mobility built into the kits of the heroes that we already have obviously but i think one of the biggest things that we saw especially from zygor's um video is he showed somebody rotating you know from mid ganking a lane getting a kill backing getting back into his lane and maybe miss one creep yeah something like that the rotation was so quick that even the enemy mid laner pushing into his tower didn't have enough time to really punish the fact that he completely rotated to off lane. So I, t I, I personally think that if we get it even like 20% bigger, just, just maybe it's it's a fat map okay it's a chunky map it goes it, it's it's a little fat so i know that some of the off lane rotations are a little bit longer especially when you compare to like a mid lane rotation um but i i do think that this game would definitely uh benefit from having a slightly larger map mm -hmm. well you know what let me let me bring this up to you guys and just looking at these kind of maps overlaid on each other I do believe part of the reason why League of Legends has such a successful map is partially because it is a square. Like right now, when we get to our T1s, it's a straight shot, right? But imagine if that straight shot wasn't there. Imagine if you had to go through the area of Gold Buffer, had to go through Cyan just to get to T1. Imagine if the jungle extended out to that portion, right? At that point, even from T1 to T1, you're already increasing that distance alone by at least that 30% margin. So maybe the success, because realistically, if you look at it from end to end, it's not that crazy. 
of a difference. Yeah, sure, it might be a little bit shorter, but maybe it's the actual shape of the map in itself. Maybe because they're making it look so nice while it's sitting in the corner and keeping a very oval shape, as opposed to just, hey, we're gonna go straight square. Let's make edges of the lanes or like I can't see from the my T1 to the enemy T1. Could you imagine that? You can't see that T1 at all. You have to go to that middle point where the river is at. And now I can see their T1 around the corner. But if I can see their T1, I'm also in danger of being ganked. You know what I'm saying? Like, wouldn't that be something right. cool that they would add and still maybe be able to keep somewhat of the map that they have right now? Well, especially with the 3D aspect of of predecessor i feel like that would also kind of expand the mystery of what's happening on the other side on the other team um, because you do have to kind of push up to really start seeing what's going on in your lane um I, and i i think you're you're definitely onto something here we've got to see that curve we gotta we gotta kind of like switch it up a little bit kind of force different positionings um, I think one of the things I would like to see is mid lane just like pushed out just a, a, a little bit, like widened just a little bit, um, because it just feels very cramped. Um, I, I could see why they're doing it because it is the shortest lane, so they probably want more people or like the the gank ability of mid lane yeah, to be a, a little bit more prevalent. Yeah, but if we do start seeing that curve and those side lanes. Um, pushing out that mid lane just a little bit more and even getting it a teeny bit wider. It's already like a chunky feeling map, but getting it a little bit wider to get those curves in, to get a little bit more of the jungle. That's something that Zygor really kind of uh, hit on. He's like, it doesn't necessarily feel like a jungle. It just feels like, like buildings and uh, just like a space for the jungler to be in. So widening up those jungles, getting them a little bit bigger, and uh, I, I, I think that'd be a really, really good start. And and not not crazy, not nothing crazy. We don't want we don't want it to be ginormous. But I think uh, just making it just a little bit bigger would really, really help the game state. You know what would be so, interesting? Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Say your I, piece, I and then bring I'm going to bring up something. That, yeah, I want to I want to bring up what Chad's saying here with some things. Like, uh, Bad News Bears says, uh, 